Welcome back to the lab, folks. Today, we're going to start upon a, a project here. And that project is to, to build a regulated variable voltage, variable current power supply uh, of the linear kind. So basically, a nice little bench power supply. And we're going to base it on uh, that kit that I got recently. So this is the PCB board for the kit. And um, it'll go uh, 0 to 30 volts and uh, approximately 0 to 3 amps. And uh, this is the schematic of it. Now, this, this schematic didn't come with it. I found this on the internet. And it looks to me like it was a, a reverse engineering job. But I've checked it out. It, it's accurate. And so it was done by this guy here, Z33T. And give credit where credit is due. And oh, okay, so let's have a look at a quick look at it here. So, you know, 24 volts comes in here. That'll be coming in out of a transformer. 24 volts AC comes in here. There's your main filter capacitor. So your your power supply, your plus and minus here, this is your main power. And uh, through this, uh, through R2, C2, D6, D5, C3, R3, D7, it, it produce a negative rail over here. Uh, for all the operational amplifiers and it uses three TL081s in this design. I would have probably used a, a TL082 and a TL081. But anyway, let's go through this here. So um, this here, this section here is your is a, a U3 here is just being used as a comparator and this is um, your current control here and it not only comes down here to the error amplifier, but also powers this transistor here, which turns on and off this LED. So this LED here is going to be uh, some sort of current limit indicator. Uh, this here, U1 is your voltage reference in conjunction with this Zener diode. And uh, so here's your current control, here's your voltage control, and here's your error amplifier. And it looks like uh, RV1 is going to be uh, for adjusting the zero voltage. So it, it goes in through the offset pin of U2. And well, that's one good reason for using a, a, a TL081 is because a TL082 or TL084 would not have the um, offset pin. So this circuit couldn't be done this way. It could still be done, but it couldn't be done this way. Then we have Q1 here, it sets up the bias for the output stage. And uh, these, they're just a uh, Darlington pair here with a fairly powerful transistor here, this big one here. And then this one here is the driving for this. And R7 here is this, uh, is this resistor. So that's, that's our current sensing. So that provides a difference between this rail here, this negative rail here, and this, this rail here will float up and down depending on the amount of current that's drawn. And that, uh, you know, that feeds all these amplifiers here, their zero volt reference. And uh, this is the negative voltage rail here. So this is zero V minus V and plus V. And that's, that's it. it. It's a very nice design, actually. I see nothing wrong with this design whatsoever. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm going to build this up and I'm going to put it through some tests. Now, I can't put it through all the tests and I'll show you why. Let me get this out of here for now. I've gotten this uh, toroidal transformer in from uh, AliExpress. I thought it was a, a decent transformer, a decent price, and it would, it would have suited the purposes very well, except for the fact that the primary is open. So it's useless. Uh, I guess I could rewind it. They gave me my money back eventually after uh, you know a day or two of bouncing back and forth. But unfortunately, I, I, I can't use this. So I don't have a 3 amp 24 volt transformer around. I do have this little triad transformer here. And uh, it's a FD624, so it's only a 1.25 amp. But I can use, I can use this for testing. Uh, well, I won't be able to test the full current output of it. I also have this case here that I'm going to use to house it in. Now, all I have for this case is, is a metal front panel. I do have a, a fiberglass rear panel that I had made up for another project. 
that I can use in this one as well. And I might in the end, once I decide some things uh, with your help, I might in the end make up a, a nice little fiberglass panel for the front of it as well. It's just a PC board. You just get made up at a PC board house and uh, they'll make it up for you and you have a really nice little panel. Or I could use one of these and paint it black. I have uh, some reusable parts here that I'm going to put in. Uh, this will be my power entry here. I'll put a fuse in it. It won't be 250 milliamps. It'll be more like an amp. And I've got these knobs here, which uh, are left over from another project. So these will make nice, nice little knobbies. And let's see, okay, I've got this. So here's one of the decisions I'm going to have to make. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing. I have one of these little, these little meters here, uh, which has got current and voltage in it. So I could use that as the meter, or I, I have a couple of small analog meters coming. I could use those. So I'll show them to you when they come in and uh, I'll ask you at that point in time whether or not I should go with the digital meter or where should I go with the analog meters. And that's about it. That's about all we have to discuss about it. So it, it should be a good little power supply. And uh, we'll build up this kit now and then I'll come back and we'll do some simple tests on it just to make sure that everything is okay. Okay, so here we have it all built up. And I've got some things just tacked on here for now, such as the, this LED here, which is uh, the overcurrent LED. And I've got this meter here attached on. It's just tacked on. I've got a little fan here, which keeps falling over um, to blow some air on that heat sink. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be drawing too much current right now. I've got uh, a load over here set up just to quickly put a little bit of a load on. I don't want to put too much current through it right now because this transformer is not up to handling 3 amps. It's only a 1.25 amp. And I have a little makeshift heat sink on here. So I don't want that to get too hot either. And some things I will note, um, I any power resistors, I, I mounted them on up off the board a little bit, including this one here. When I did the math on this one here, this is a quarter watt, uh, 82 ohms. I don't think a quarter watt is going to be sufficient for that. So I'm going to watch for this one getting hot. Everything else seems to be okay. Uh, I mean, this, this one here should get warm. This one should get warm if it's up near the three amps going through it. And other than that, like the board was, uh, the board's pretty nicely laid out and it's nice and easy to solder to. The kit didn't come with any sockets for the op amps. So I put some nice little machined uh, socket into it. And uh, that way I should be able to pop out the op amps. And there's a reason I want to be able to do that is because I have every reason to believe that these op amps will be fakes. The whole price of the whole thing was less than $6. And, and three genuine TL081s would be about a buck a piece. Yeah, I think there's every reason to believe that these are going to be fake. So I want to be able to replace them. And let's see, what else did I notice about it? Uh, all the parts were there. There were no missing parts in the kit. Uh, one thing I would suggest, like the there's two little zeners here, one for the voltage reference for the positive regulation, and one is a, a regulator itself for the negative voltage. And those look awfully a lot like the 1N418s that are also used on the board. So, I would install them first. Find those two Zener dies by whatever means you find them. Put them in the board first. That way you won't make a mistake and get them somewhere wrong. Uh, let's see, is there anything else to report on the kit itself? No, I think that's pretty much it. There, there are a couple of little weird things like uh, why does they put three terminals here when the center terminal's not connected? Your guess would be as good as mine. And uh, uh, like this guy here, I put a 12 volt regulator in here for the fan because 12 volt fans are much easier to come by than 24 volt fans. And there will be a fan in the final box, not probably this fan, but some fans to circulate air through and to blow onto the heat sink, which I, I do have a much bigger heat sink coming than this one. What else can I say? Board's very well marked. All the values are marked on here. If you're good at reading these metal film resistors, you should have no problem at all. If not, 
you can always use something like this to get a quick reading on them. Yeah, these pots here are just tacked on. I'm going to get a 10 turn pot for the voltage. And I may even go the route of putting a 10 turn pot on the current as well. It depends on how well it all works. That's, that's about it. Okay, so uh, I have this all hooked up here. I got a switch here, inline switch, and uh, we can uh, we can turn it on, see what happens. Here. Okay, so we've got it uh, set up here, 12.2 volts, and there's 0.35 amps running through it. So let's, uh, here's the voltage. We'll turn it up all the way. That's not 30 volts. Let's see if that, it could be this is faulty. So I, let me measure the voltage there. No, it's uh, 26 volts, it matches that, 26.04. So, and let's see what's the voltage coming into it. Okay, we've got 31.6 volts and that's DC. I'm sure there's some, some ripple in there as well. Yeah, we've got 3.3 volts of ripple on there. So yeah, we're not getting, this is, uh, is it the op amp? It's not going rail to rail. We got a uh, darn compare here. So we're getting 26 volts out. Uh, maybe 27.5 volts coming out of the op amp here. Yep, 27.4. And let me, uh, let me rotate this and see. Oh yeah, quite a bit of rotation. So this is not, this op amp is not going up to the rail. Probably just uh, some entirely different operational amplifier stuck inside a package that's marked TL081. I have some proper ones coming. So they're coming with the transformer from DigiKey. And I'm getting another transformer for another project too, which I'll, I'll show you guys. It's a project I did in the past, but I want to update it. so. I was always intended to do that, but never got around to it because the device, which is a power amplifier, an audio power amplifier, has been put in use and never taken out. Okay, so I think very little testing I can do here. I have no, uh, I have no faith in these operational amplifiers. So let's let's uh, just try turning the current limit here, all the way up. I better bring it down. Ooh, and then it starts limiting almost immediately right at the bottom. A very little adjustment there. It's doing the job, but it's not doing, I would expect that about, you know, about three quarters of the way through the movement that would engage with at 0.73 amps, but it's not. It's like the last 10% uh, of movement. And okay, let's try a voltage control. Uh, why is it current going into current limit mode? That shouldn't be happening, not according to this circuit here. That should not be happening. Let's have a quick look at pins two and three on this. So we've got pin two is uh, close to zero volts, which it should be because it's, it's coming down here to the zero volt line. And pin three is at 0.26 volts. If I turn this all the way down, it goes down to zero as it should, and I turn it up. Right, so as long as this is above, as long as pin three is above pin two, uh, that, that LED should be off. So let's see what's happening here. And the LED is going on, and we have pin Pin three at point three seven volts. Pin two, yes, that shouldn't be turning on. That should not be turning on. What do we have coming out of here? We have thirty volts. Thirty three. So yeah, this point here is uh, at thirty volts, and that's at thirty three. So it it's turning on. Uh, it would turn on. I just don't know why that that is at 30 volts and not at 33. Because it's, it's supposed to be set up as a comparator. This shouldn't be at 30 volts. Yeah, I got a seeking suspicion. We got some 
really bad operation level fires here. Okay, now that's that's what you'd expect. Once you get past the point, it would just bang down to the you know as close to the negative ro rails as it can get, which is not very close. And then up to the top. But there's enough. You see that is, is almost always lit all the time, under certain circumstances. And if I put this all the way up there, then what happens here? We should still have. Okay, let's come down a little bit to 29 volts. And our rail is at 31 volts. It should still be enough to turn that transistor on. This is weird. Uh, this, the voltage coming out of this should be much higher than what it is. It should be very close to that rail here, this 31 volts, so that there's no chance that this, uh, this transistor here can turn on until it goes, switches down to the negative rail, then that can turn on. And that's the way it's supposed to work, but it's not working that way. Okay, um, yeah, I, I suspect these devices here need to be replaced. And let me check this here, is that, oh yeah, that resistor is, is too hot to touch. So that uh, I'm going to, I don't have a, a quarter watt or a half watt 80 ohm, 82 ohm resistor. The value is not terribly important, so I can get a, a couple of 150 or 160 ohm resistors and parallel them, that's what I'll probably do here. This of course, I'm only passing less than an amp through it, so it should be okay. The one across the capacitor, it's getting hot. I mean, I don't even know why it's there. And that's getting warm. So we get our fan out here, make sure it's blowing on things. We're pretty well done here anyway. This is not getting warm at all, so that's plenty enough heat sinking for what it's having to do here right now. All right, so we, we have some things to come in, op amps and a proper transformer. So we'll wait for those things to happen, then we'll come back and we'll start building this thing up and do some proper testing on it and go from there. But yeah, the, we're getting some very strange behavior here with these operation amplifiers. They're, they're kind of not doing what they should be doing. So I don't think they're real TL-081s. They're not getting warm or anything. The only thing that's getting warm is this resistor here. This other one here is fine. But this one here is getting way too hot for its comfort. And yeah, okay, folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits for today, and uh, we'll come back to this when I get the parts in to continue on with it. And uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.